Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, I'm going to talk nine years for interactive computation with uh, Melissa, Yevgeny, Yuval, Daniel, Rafael, and Vinod. I'm Tianren. And uh, so. so there are two parties, senders and receiver. Uh, I was considering the problem of like uh, each party has the input, and uh, they won't let the receiver know the function of their joint input. Okay, so it's called non-interactive, which means it's a two-message protocol. The receiver sends a message to the sender, and the sender returns a message back. The receiver knows the output. So, for example, if you have fully homomorphic encryption, you get it. Let the receiver send the encryption of her data, and the sender do locally evaluation and uh, send encryption out of to back. Okay. But uh, homomorphic encryption is quite inefficient. So in mo the more, more practical one, it's using garbage circuit and OT. So for garbage circuit, for any input uh, the, receiver, uh, the sender has, the sender can compute the garbage circuit and also two tags for each input wires, such that if you also consider the receiver's input and uh, uh, give the receiver the couple circuit and the corresponding input hex, uh, they jointly review the output and nothing else computationally. So this lead to, directly lead to a protocol, uh, an SK protocol, that the sender just send the couple circuit in plane and also use oblivion transfer to send one tag of input wire. So far, so good, but uh, uh, this part have many advantages, like uh, they enjoy, or they can, you can use all the different OT realizations and the different uh, assumptions and uh, different models. It's quite efficient. And also by like uh, Yuval El, Rafael, Manoj, and uh, Emmett, they actually make this protocol maliciously secure. But uh, what I'm going to talk about today it's reusability. So this protocol is not reusable. Uh, what does reusable mean, and uh, why do we care about it? Uh, when you go back to the definition, you should consider that the first message is not sent to the sender. The first message of the receiver is just some public message. He, you can publish on your favorite uh, social media, like Facebook or Twitter, so that the sender can just uh, grab your message from the t your Twitter and send you a message and then the receiver gets the output. Okay, for reusability, we want the receiver doesn't need to post a new Twitter every time she uses this protocol. So when a new party comes, when a new sender comes, he can just uh, read the Twitter and use the same message and uh, send the receiver a, a message, and the receiver should also know the corresponding function outputs. So if you hear about correctness and the semi honest security, it automatically goes through. But when you consider malicious party, in particular when the sender is malicious, things become quite tricky. So when all the senders are malicious, in particular, they can send multiple messages to uh, the receiver and they can learn the receiver behavior after the receiver gets message and also they can send new messages adaptively we want the protocol to be secure, even under such attack. Okay, so what goes wrong with the old uh, protocol? In the code mode protocol, when the sender is malicious, say the sender replace one of the input tag with, with some trash. And then when the if, if the receiver gets this trash, the receiver would behave accordingly, and the, the sender might learn that. If the sender found, oh, I change this input to trash and uh, the receiver's ch behaviors change, he know the corresponding input bit and uh, which violate the security. Uh, but uh, you can do some patch on it. Like you can, instead of fit the input in plain text to the OT uh, uh, Oracle, you fit some encoding of the input, such that uh, like a few bit of the encoding doesn't leak any information about the inputs. This way you can make it, uh, oh sorry, this should be malicious security. You can make it secure in one shot, but not in the reusable setting. Because in the reusable setting, the sender can repeat attack and learn every bit of the encoding. Well, hopefully. Uh, 
uh, in such case, like, uh, although a few bit of the encoding doesn't leak input, the inputting in total would leak the input. And uh, you might want to get some small patch, but uh, our first theorem in the paper shows that it's impossible in the sense that if you only rely on OT, there's, uh, you cannot uh, construct a usable NSC. Uh, but our first one, the attacker is unbounded. So it's, we show there's no information circle NSC in OT hybrid mode. We also have a theorem shows that if you are willing to assume like there are black box simulation, there are like one function, and you only consider certain functionality, like uh, even computational one, it's impossible. Okay. So a different route is from NSK. The NSK based uh, protocol, like uh, the standard would prove that his message is only generated. But in this case, the protocols typically become quite inefficient because the NSK require non-black box use of all the primitives. Okay. So to get around with that, we consider the arithmetic analog of OT, which is called uh, oblivion linear function evaluation, or OIE in short. In such case, we can, uh, there is a field or ring F. The receiver's input is just one field element, and the sender's input is two field elements. The output is the, okay, evaluate the receiver's input on the linear function specified by the sender's input. The first thing we show is like uh, this functionality is complete for reusable NSK. In a sense that uh, uh, in reusable OLE hybrid model, you can consider information, you can construct information theoretical use a secure uh, reusable NSC. And of course, we also need to construct such protocol uh, we use a pilier assumption you'll mention later in CRS model. Here, CRS means a common reference string, so we need a trusted setup. Okay. So if you consider a bit, um, assuming the field is binary field, then OLE is actually equivalent to OT. Uh, this kind of contradicts with our previous result. We show that uh, such a protocol is impossible if it's in OT hypermodel. Uh, therefore, it's not surprising we need the field to be super large, uh, expansionally large. Our security loss is proportional to, it's roughly the one over the field size. Okay. So no, okay, now I will give you a quite brief overview of uh, how we construct these two theorem. So the first one, uh, we want to use this as black box, and that's all we need to construct uh, an NSC. Um, we consider what if we only have a one shot circuit. One shot means non erasable OK. When the sender is malicious, uh, he doesn't actually have a well-defined input. But uh, in UC security, there's a simulator. The simulator reads the input the sender sent to the ROLE Oracle. And uh, from that, the, the simulator can extract an effective input, such that the receiver should output fx uh, y star, where y star is the effective input. OK, I will mention that uh, for normal MP MPC, uh, typically the receiver would abort, or some party would abort when they saw abnormal behavior. But uh, in this, uh, OK, in the non-interactive settings, uh, non-abort is free in the sense that whenever the receiver detects malicious behavior, the receiver can just pretend the senders use some default input. Okay, this is not very important. Okay, so why, uh, assume you have such simulator is still not reusable secure? Uh, the simulator output might be a distribution. In such case, the receiver would output, a, a, also have entropy in the ideal world. And therefore, it also have entropy in the real world. Uh, this entropy is not coming from the receiver's input, because it's secure, one-shot secure. But it's coming from the receiver's randomness. But that's the problematic part. Uh, if it leaks the receiver's randomness and uh, the sender repeats such protocols, uh, the, the randomness leakage would accumulate to a degree the protocol is no more secure. So therefore, the fix is quite simple. We want to construct a protocol where the simulator is deterministic. 
and then you check uh, everything, it works well. Like, if you have one shot uh, security, you say security and the and simulator is deterministic, it's automatically you say secure uh, for usable setting. Okay. So let's start with, okay. Let's start with assuming everything is arithmetic. So the input for both parties, it's a vector over some field. And the functionality, it's a arithmetic uh, branching program or arithmetic NC circuit, NC1 circuit. We'll consider more generic, general case by the very end of this slide. Okay. So by using randomized encoding by Yishai and Kushi, oh sorry, Yishai and Kushi Labis, uh, there's a the randomized encoding that uh, the sender can uh, encode his input into a matrix and a vector, such that uh, uh, matrix A, X, A times the input of the receiver X plus B reveals nothing but the output. Okay. So if you only are satisfied with semi honest, you can just use the uh, OLE as black box and uh, the receiver output, the uh, FX one. But when you, okay, when the sender is malicious, we want to make sure like uh, the matrix A and B is honest generated. So in particular, we want to replace this OLE black box with something we call certified OLE, which is a super powerful primitive such that uh, if the input on the sender set satisfy some constraint, it just evaluate the linear function. But otherwise, the functionality, functionality would inform the receiver says no, like uh, the sender is doing some simulations. Okay. So basically there are some, if there's no certified, uh, 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 like uh, it's just some plain OLE, but with the certified, we want the, the, we want the sender to be able to prove any arithmetic constraint on the coefficients he chose. So in particular, this implies the designated verifier NISC in OLE hybrid model, because you can prove any constraints. But for this talk, a general arithmetic constraint is too hard. We only consider a super simple constraint we call the, okay, so we only consider one a, AI equals AJ for some IJ. So this is totally simplified. For the general constraint, it's only in the e print. Okay, actually, even for this one, we won't fully cover it. So how does it go? So, to get a favor of our construction, uh, the receiver choose some randomness and fit to one of the OLE or code. And uh, the sender choose one of the coefficients and uh, some random, uh, uh, one random field element, and the receiver get AW plus R. So here AW plus R, this, this OLE output, you should view that as a commitment of A. Because, yeah, like as you can check, later the sender can open the commitment by sending A and R to the receiver, and it's easy to track this is the statistically sound and uh, uh, zero knowledge in uh, OLE hybrid model. Okay. And say later the sender want to send uh, AB, use AB as coefficients and uh, XI as the receiver's input and let the receivers know say XI plus B. So this is what the receiver to learn. In order to do that, the receiver choose a new randomness in, like uh, for this index I and uh, he fit uh, something, some encoding to the uh, OLE, hybrid, uh, OLE hybrid model. And now the sender, okay, the sender choose something else. Uh, let's not check the detail why, it, why we choose that. We get some new OLE outputs. And uh, there's a magic equation. Uh, actually, this equation is not magic at all. It's like uh, if you want this, equation to hold, you reverse engineer and you will find this is the, what you should fit into the OE Oracle. Okay. So let's check uh, how well this protocol is. 
Uh, the correctness is obvious. It's just from the equation here. So for using security against the receiver, when we have receiver's input, the simulator can extract the efficient output of the receiver. And for the rec using security against the sender, it's a bit tricky. Uh, actually, uh, if the sender is honest, honest in the sense that uh, if uh, these two coefficients, he fits the same coefficient and these two, he fits the same coefficients, the simulator can extract the efficient uh, input. But in otherwise, if the sender deviates from protocol, uh, the simulator actually cannot uh, extract the input. So, so we, we, we didn't prove user security yet. But uh, we can show that the, what the receiver would output when the sender deviates protocol is a purely random uh, field element, purely random uh, even condition on the sender's view. So this is like the first step. And later we do a lot of things, like uh, because it's, this is purely random, we can repeat the product twice so that if they, they match, then we know the sender is not uh, malicious. But then it opens the door for the receiver to cheat. So we actually, okay, we won't go to the detail, but we go back and forth several rounds to get this minimum certified OLE. And then based on this minimized uh, uh, certified OLE, we construct the complete certified OLE. So this is all I want to give about the detail of the uh, construction of certified OLE and uh, our construction of an SK in OLE hybrid model. The next, I would give some brief overview about how we construct the two message OLE protocol. Okay, so OLE is a arithmetic analog of OT, and uh, for OT, there's a nice construction by Packard, Vinod, and Waters. Uh, our construction have a very similar favor with them. So uh, the common random string can be chosen from two different distributions, and that uh, specify two different modes. Involved mode, you can interpret the receiver's message as the encryption of his input. And therefore, like the, the, okay, the simulator knows the secret key of the encryption, so the simulator can easily simulate the receiver's input. And uh, the sender's message leaks no information other than x plus b. So in this mode, uh, it's information theoretical secure against the receiver. In the next mode, uh, by changing only the CRS, the receiver's message is actually uh, an encryption of zero. And the sender message is the encryption of his uh, input. So therefore, in this mode, it's easy to simulate and it's uh, information theoretical against the malicious sender. And uh, the two distributions are indistinguishable. So we also have computational secure against either sender or receiver. Okay. So for Pioneer Group, we, we won't uh, mention the detail. It's a, oh sorry. So Pioneer encryption is based on assumptions similar to factoring. But uh, uh, we just use it as a black box. Uh, there's a key generation algorithm we, consider, we, we call the secret key trapdoor because actually in our protocol, no one in the real world are going to use this secret key. Only the simulator are going to use it. And uh, there's an encryption decryption scheme. And when the randomness is zero, we don't need the secret key. We can directly decrypt. And uh, moreover, uh, this scheme is somehow homomorphic in the sense that if you multiply two uh, ciphertext. You get the ciphertext of the, uh, you, you, you add two, yes, you, you multiply two ciphertext. You get ciphertext of their addition and also the randomness is the addition of their randomness. Okay, this is all we're going to need. So in the first mode, uh, we have two, the CRS has two, three encryptions. The first one is encryption pool one and the uh, zero randomness, the other is just using fresh randomness. And, uh, okay, the sender's input, as I mentioned, it's a, a encryption of his input, and the a secret key only known by him, and the public key only known by him. Oh, sorry, and the randomness only known by him. And, uh, yes, the 
this, uh, the sender just sent the bench message back, and uh, if you check, yeah, everything should work well. Oh, we found this. In the other mode, we just replace one of the uh, CRS encryption with the encryption of zero. So the two CRS are indistinguishable. And uh, correspondingly, yeah, correspond, okay. Correspondingly, the uh, message would change. Uh, I want to mention something that uh, at this time, uh, the simulator can actually behave maliciously. You don't know whether the randomness still satisfies the right correlations. And uh, in this protocol, there's no way to detect whether the sender is malicious. So actually, we need a different mechanism, not mentioned in the talk again, uh, to detect whether the uh, sender is malicious. So that's all I want to talk about uh, our OLE from Pilot Group. So a quick summary of our result. We show that uh, you cannot construct an ASCII Theory, uh, in OT hybrid model without other, other assumptions. But you can do the same thing for, OL, sorry, in OT without other assumptions, but you can do the same thing in OLE hybrid model for a small arithmetic function. And uh, also, as a side product, you can get uh, an IZK for any functions. Oh, sorry, for any, for any MP language. And by combining these two with Scarborough circuit, you can get uh, NSC for any functions. But this time, it's no more information theoretical secure against the receiver. And uh, eventually, we also have a, a OLE protocol from Pilot group assumption. And by Compose, the result we, uh, the, uh, result we have, it means we can construct reusable NSC and NSK in Pilot model, uh, sorry, under Pilot assumption. And in particular, uh, our construction, it's information theoretical secure in the OLE hybrid model. And our OLE, it's one side information theoretical secure basing on the distribution of CRS, which means the composed one is also one side information theoretical secure. So in particular, the most interesting one is like, uh, you consider an SDK that it's one side secure, a uh, one side information circle secure against the receiver. It means we have a, uh, oh, sorry, uh, this should be statistical. We have a statistical destiny verifier NISC argument. And another feature of the protocol is like, uh, because OE is like arithmetic analog of OT, you can actually make all the cryptography come to, uh, to the offline phase. So in the offline phase, you construct a lot of randomized, random uh, OLE pairs. And in the online phase, you just, whenever you need OLE, you use this offline computed random, randomness information circularly. So therefore, the online phase is a non-cryptography, and uh, it's quite sufficient, uh, quite efficient. Uh, the OR communication doesn't uh, increase, yeah. So, that's all I want to talk. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any questions? Thanks for the talk. Um, so I was wondering, can you comment on the efficiency of your protocol, like okay. the complexity? OK, so efficiency, OK. Uh, maybe here, the NSK protocol is quite nice, because for each gate in the circuit, you only need to transfer a constant number of group element. Uh, but for NSC, it's kind of tricky. So we have two ways to construct NSC. One is information theoretical, but this one using the uh, randomized encodings of uh, NC1 circuit which, or branching program, which means it's only polynomially or of the size of the uh, branching programs. And the other one is using, if you, okay, the other one is you, if you use Gabor circuit and you prove the Gabor circuit is unsegenerated. In this one, the computation would be, uh, the communication would be a uh, poly circular parameter over, uh, for, for each gate. Yeah. So um, I guess the follow-up question is that is there, do you think there's some hope of uh, eventually have this protocol um, 
applied or used in practice? Uh, okay, I guess if you compare with the, uh, the approach from, like, from an NZK based one, uh, for a very small circuit, our protocol here might be quite efficient, maybe more efficient than, than there. But uh, for large circuit, I didn't uh, check the I didn't check the exact uh, number which one is more efficient. But uh, I guess we also had the advantage of the online offline. Because if you use this online offline, then uh, like in the online phase, there's no public key encryption, e even if you use the garbage circuit approach, which could be quite efficient if you are using some weak device. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I guess let's, uh, let's keep the other questions offline since we are running a little bit behind the schedule. Uh, yeah, let's welcome the, uh, let's thank the speaker again.